Hi. Today is probably going to be my last video that I record before this baby is born. So the last time I recorded was like a long time ago. <laughs> I've honestly, I honestly have not been recording like that many videos or anything like in between that video and this one. So I have quite a bit to fill in. Um, and yeah, and let's get started. So I don't know if this is going to be long or short. Um, but I'm just trying to see where I picked up. Okay, so today is August 9th. So I am officially <laughs> and finally in my third trimester. Um, and um, so I only have a few weeks to go, <laughs> like 10-ish or 11 or 12, you know, if I go overdue. So really not that much longer left, which is great. Um, let's start with some obvious things. So um, as far as morning sickness, it kind of like lessened a little bit in the second trimester, but it's definitely <laughs> picked back up. It, I had like maybe a two month break where it wasn't like every day and all day. Um, but you know, certain foods were still hard to eat. Like chicken is completely out this pregnancy. I don't like looking at it. I don't like smelling it. Um, I don't like watching other people eat it or and I don't like cooking it. So it's just out. <laughs> it's out for me. And pretty much for the kids as well because I've tried to buy it and cook it for them and what ends up happening is it goes bad and then of course it smells even worse and I have to throw it away so I just cannot bring myself to like cook chicken other than like at my job actually so that's kind of weird but I just hate everything about chicken right now I hate the word chicken so <laughs> so chicken is out so um I mainly have just been eating like breakfast um breakfast foods is still my favorite all-time thing my favorite meal of the day and my favorite things to like eat um so I just make sure that my first meal is like a really really big one um and so lunch and dinner is is still kind of hard for me I don't really like too many lunch and dinner foods sometimes the sandwiches like a lot of times I'm ordering from Dunkin Donuts if I'm not getting a breakfast sandwich sandwich then I'm getting uh, their grilled cheese sandwich which I really really love and that stays down um, and I usually drink tea or water um, I haven't been able to drink like caffeinated drinks really so I haven't really been drinking um, soda which is weird because for a couple of my pregnancies soda helped like the carbonation of the soda helped with my morning sickness this time it did absolutely nothing and um caffeine sodas are like the worst ones i can sometimes drink root beer and that's okay but then sometimes it's too sweet that's the other thing this baby <laughs> will not let me eat sweets which is so annoying and uh i'm mad about it <laughs> so <laughs> I try every so often to eat sweets here and there, but if I go too far, it's instantly um, a problem. I'm instantly like throwing up 30 minutes later or so. So I really have to keep my sweets under control. She just does not like it. Um, and I'm hoping that, I mean, I guess it's good, you know, because as far as like, I mean, most sweets are not like good extra calories for you, um, but like even some fruits and, and stuff is like too sweet. So this is definitely a savory baby <laughs> definitely different from my boys because with my boys I was eating sweets all the time um so so yeah I tried to limit my sweets just because it doesn't make me feel good anyway um and like I said the nausea is coming back so it's not been like every day uh throwing up but I have started to throw up again and it really sucks <laughs> and I'm really looking forward to delivery when I can just kind of eat freely and normally because when I'm breastfeeding I pretty much can eat uh whatever I want you know because I know I need the extra calories and like the moment the babies come out I feel fine like the morning sickness the nausea all that stuff goes away and I feel like me again but while I'm pregnant it's just so bad um so yeah I haven't been able really to drink like I love green tea jasmine green tea is my absolute favorite but I haven't been able to drink that because it makes me feel sick as well um cold tea really doesn't do too much so i've really just been existing on water and like um iced tea like iced lemon tea or whatever it can't be too sweet though so like not sweet tea 
Um, I usually like like the raspberry, you know, tea, like if you go out to eat, raspberry tea or whatever. I have to keep it like a lemony kind of tea or a minty tea. Like I can drink a hot mint tea, but again, like I said, it has to be like ca caffeine free. Um, so basically like herbal teas, I really like hibiscus right now. Um, in a few weeks, of course, I'm gonna start my, you know, labor prep routine and then I'll be drinking the, um, what's it? The red raspberry leaf tea. And that also is caffeine free. So that's safe for pregnancy and that helps tone your uterus and all of that stuff. Um, so, so yeah, in addition to not being able to drink that many different things, then I also have not been able to drink coffee. Coffee just made me feel so bad. And that's another thing I had to eliminate. So I've kind of been able a little bit to drink like half decaf <laughs> and that's been, a, uh, and that's been okay. Um, but you know, I love my coffee. I love real coffee. But again, little Miss Baby will not let me drink um you know like full-fledged real coffee and you know fall's coming up pumpkin spice season is coming up my ultimate favorite um and i'll probably i don't know i'll probably half decaf it or like decaf all the way now mind you decaf is not 100 percent decaffeinated um but as long as it's not like full-fledged coffee for the most part i'm okay but I still can't like drink it every day. Like I can't have a decaf coffee every day because that will make me sick. <laughs> so a lot of things still make me sick. I still have a lot of food aversions. I still have the nausea and vomiting. Um, but yeah, I know it'll go away once the baby's born. So it's just a season. <laughs> um, what else is new? Okay, so I just had an appointment today. And like I said, because I am, well, I'm 39 weeks and two days today or 39 weeks and three days, whatever. Um, so yeah, so now I'm having my appointments, you know, every two weeks. I declined the glucola. <laughs> They're not happy about that, but I declined it because I'm just not comfortable with taking that drink. Last time I did the finger sticks, you know, if you watch my channel or you followed my pregnancy from last time. Um, this time, so I'm at a different OB office but still it's the same practice so it's a whole new set of doctors or whatever but it's the same group it's still the same ob group and so i'm just meeting all these people for the first time because i really wanted to deliver at that hospital that's why i changed the location and i really i had good experiences with the last with the other practice i was going to um but you know i just wanted something new and different and i wanted to deliver at the hospital that this practice you know will deliver at or that they you know actually do their deliveries at or whatever um so i'm really meeting everybody for the first time yeah and so last time i was able to do uh the finger sticks for two weeks which was so tedious and annoying um but that was fine and it was covered so like everything that i needed to do those like the testing strips the lancet the um the monitor all of that stuff was covered and insurance paid for it this time they did not pay for it they said because i wasn't what did they say i wasn't like it wasn't like a medical necessity for me i was just choosing to do the finger sticks so i would have had to pay for it myself now mind you it wasn't that expensive for whatever but i just was like okay um so i would have had to you know either use my old set which you know i don't even have it <laughs> or you know go out and buy the new stuff um and then with my job it just was like it was going to be impossible to test and i was like well i'm not at risk for it i've never had it um and of course they explain all the the risks and all that stuff but i'm like unless you guys have an alternate test that is uh more holistic than no like i know other places and again this is one of the issues with having an OBGYN versus a midwife they're not as holistic or natural about certain things as i want them to be like i can get the same amount of sugar in like a pancake meal or uh you know like 12 ounces of orange juice or anything i know some doctors let you do the jelly bean test some of them let you do like, um, you know, like you eat a, a regular breakfast, you know, and they come in and test you that way. And then some people say they do the A1C with their, you know, you know, third trimester blood work. So there's a lot of different ways to do it. Um, <laughs> and the doctor was like, well, did you have this drink? Did you have this one? They all were do blue cola, but they just were different flavors. And I was like, yeah, I've done it the first three times and it was fine. You know, everything was fine. I didn't like vomit. 
um but i always ate before the test too so even though i had the morning sickness it didn't make me throw up and i actually did think they tasted pretty good i know some women have a really have a problem with the way that they taste so that wasn't the thing it's just you know i've been doing a lot of research literally on everything concerning pregnancy childbirth everything right and i just am not comfortable taking it so that's why i didn't take it last time that's why i'm not taking it this time and i did not do the alternative so you know that is what it is obviously they can't force me to do it and i'm pretty confident in my decisions it's my body it's my baby and um yeah at the end of the day they're there to support me and work for me and not the other way around so i didn't feel no kind of way about saying no and you know that's just what that is for right now um and you know of course they explain the risk of having a baby with undiagnosed um gestational diabetes and everything like that and and i understand the risk and like i said i just feel like no y'all either do something different or don't even bother me and talk to me about it again so that's what we're doing with that um i did have a couple of growth scans so i had the 20 week anatomy everything went fine with that everything was perfect um and she was measuring perfectly with everything really they wanted me to come back for another growth scan i think like seven weeks after that one which i declined um just because i know how they get <laughs> i feel like i've seen this lady but i know how they get when they're trying to like constantly keep me focused on the babies you know weight or whatever and i just believe in my heart that i make small babies like i'm not that big their dad's not that big our families are not like big big people um and my mom didn't have big babies also as well so i just think we make small babies and there's nothing wrong with them being smaller or on a smaller side of things the only problem or issue that i really did have was with saya that was my first and she was way smaller than she was supposed to be and for a reason so i had you know preeclampsia with her but for the boys everyone has been fine matthias was the only one who ever measured exactly what he was supposed to weigh for the week he was supposed to weigh it um and um asa and kenzo were just a little bit smaller um but perfectly healthy perfectly fine um and that was my that. next growth scan will be uh actually in a few weeks i think like two or three weeks i'm really looking forward to that because you know i haven't seen a little baby girl since 20 weeks um and i think i'll be 32 weeks at that time so i'm really going to that one just to make sure that she is head down like sometimes i feel like she's head down and then other times i feel like she's laying transverse and i can't gauge it so i just want to make sure she's head down for my own you know knowledge or whatever um and then um and i'm pretty sure she's growing perfectly as well like i feel like like in my mind i'm thinking she's going to be my biggest baby and i'm going to get into like all of my birth predictions and stuff like that uh at the end of this video so definitely stick around for that but that's how i'm feeling now you know today they did measure my fundal height and it was 28 so technically i'm measuring small um, but up until today, I've been measuring, like, on track. But I just think, like, well, I have wide hips, and I just think there's so much space for my baby to go, and my belly doesn't really, I don't really get that big. Like, I don't know, whatever. I just think it's it's just a way you carry your babies or whatever will, de will determine, like, how big they are, how big they can grow, how they're laying at that point in time. So I don't really feel like she's small, and I don't think she's measuring small. I just think that I carry small as well. Um, so, so that's that. So I'm not like, I'm not concerned about her weight, her size or anything like that. Um, but I am looking forward to that appointment just to make sure she's head down. Cause if not, then I got to do all this funky stuff. Like I had to do with Kenzo to make sure that he was head down for delivery. Okay. So that's the next thing to talk about is that because I've had two C-sections, the OB practice that I am going to does not do VBACs after two C-sections. And that is probably one of the biggest things that I'm doing research on now, even though I'm 100% confident in my decision to have a vaginal birth. So I haven't said anything to them. You know, like last pregnancy, I went back and forth with the doctors and you know, like, you know, this research says this, this, and this. Um, but I'm not doing that this time. I'm just not, I'm not <laughs> going to stress myself out or allow them to stress me out 
or anything like that so whenever they mention the repeat c-section i'm just like yeah okay mm -hmm, and you know whatever um so she told me today that they basically would schedule me for a c-section a repeat c-section at 39 weeks which will be uh when would that be well, my due date is october 22nd by my records by theirs it's october 23rd whatever um so that would be like the week before somewhere between like october 12th 15th something like that i'll probably be like 39 weeks but i am not doing that so that brings me to my next thing is that i plan on this baby being born at home <laughs> so if you've seen my pregnancy regrets video or something like that i think it's called pregnancy regrets video where i talked about you know really have really have wanting to have a home birth or to experience that or whatever i just felt like it was something that just wasn't like for me because i know i have the history of preeclampsia because i know i have the history of c-section so v back at home technically is more riskier and stuff but i've done a lot of research and i'm continuing to do research and all of the statistics and everything that i've seen really support v back in at home um so that is my plan and my intention so i'm really just going to my old bees to follow my pregnancy um and i didn't like you know totally plan on having another birth or another child so i just was like oh that just is a dream of mine that will never come true but of course like if my sisters got pregnant or whatever i would love to like support them with a home birth but i was like okay so this time you know and i called around like when i found out i was pregnant i called around to so many so many different offices birth centers hospitals and stuff to see if I could find a provider that would support VBAC after two C-sections and a lot of them didn't. Or the ones that did, did not accept insurance or did not accept my insurance. So then it became like a financial thing. And I'm like, well, that's not really fair that moms who can't afford it or whatever can't have a VBAC, you know, after one C-section. And even after the one C-section, I was pushing a lot for that as well for both of the the VBACs that I did have. But now it's like, nope, it just seemed like all the doors was closed and nobody wanted to do it. Um, and I did, we had a doula seminar that was like really nice. Like we had different panelists there that spoke. And actually one of the ladies that was on the panel is like the, the highest up OB, you know, overseer of the hospital that I plan to deliver at. So I was like, you know what, she's here. I can talk to her and question her or whatever. So after the, the conference, you know, I went up to her and I talked to her about, you know, does this hospital support VBACs after two C-sections or whatever? And she basically shut me down and was like, no, we don't do it because of liability. Basically, that was the answer. And I was so like, I remember just feeling so defeated and so sad because I'm like, when she talked on the panel, it was pro women, pro mother's choice, pro everything. And I was like, I really connect with this lady. And she was, you know, a woman of color and all of that stuff. And just really talked about, you know, how women aren't listened to and all of this stuff. And I was like, oh, this is going to be fantastic. But when I talked to her face to face, it was kind of like, she thought like all the other medical people thought. And I'm like, like I said, this was a doula conference. I am a doula and all that stuff. So I was really disappointed. And I remember, I don't remember if I cried. I probably did. <laughs> I probably cried, you know, talked to my mom about it. But I had already been thinking about home birth. And the only thing that was stopping me was when I mentioned it to my mom, she wasn't comfortable with it. Now, my mom, she's also a doula. She's been present for all of my births. And she's an RN. So, I was like, well, if I had her support, that would mean the world to me. Like, I still was thinking about it. So, before I decided, like, 100% on a home birth, I was like, well... This is what we're going to do. We're going to wait. We're going to stay home. We're going to labor as much as we can at home. And then when I feel like, you know, baby's about to come and then we'll drive over to the hospital. Now, the hospital I was going to deliver at is 30 minutes away. And the hospital that I had my other children at is about 15 minutes away. So neither one of them are really that far. And, uh, you know, I've given birth both times for well, all times without an epidural. So I know what it feels like when i'm at that stage where i need to push this baby's coming out soon so i just figured like we would head to the car at that point obviously i probably will be pushing it um 
and would have a car birth or whatever whatever the case was but that was my plan was just to stay as stay at home as long as possible and then head into the hospital ready to push because i know at that chance i would have the greatest, greatest option the greatest success at having a vaginal birth with with providers that didn't support a vaginal birth after two c-sections or more whatever that was the plan but you know i talked to my mom about it she wasn't all the way comfortable with the home birth thing so i was like okay and i just kept praying about it really and just was like god you know this is what i want to do this is what this is just something that's just i feel like in my heart to do so i prayed and prayed and prayed and then one day she came to me and she sent me a video i think on like instagram and it was a lady um giving birth in her bathtub at home so it was like a free birth unassisted i'm not sure she had planned it to be or just turned out that way because the baby came really fast or whatever and then she talked to me the next day or whatever and asked me if i seen the video and i was like yeah it was really nice of course emotional and stuff and she was like you know if you really want to do this we can do this you have my support and when she said that i was like okay it's go time <laughs> this is what we're doing this is what we're planning so that is my plan now i do not have a midwife um and that's another thing so in this state in new jersey midwives are not legally allowed to attend home births they're not allowed to attend home births or v-backs is that what it is i think that's what it is so like i think they can attend home births but not for v-backs or like twin births or whatever so if you do find a midwife that does that then she is jeopardizing you know her licensure to to do that for you um and again it became an affordability issue because my insurance wouldn't even cover a midwife to you know oversee the labor and the pregnancy and all that so i really would love a uh, support of a midwife but you know i don't have one and that's not an option for me right now so i am planning on an unassisted free birth at home <laughs> and i know that sounds crazy i know a lot of people don't agree with it i know people are like that's too risky and all that stuff but like i said i've done my own research and i'm really just going to god with this one i'm really just trusting my body and myself and god and the baby that all everything that i'm asking for for this birth or that i'm looking forward to will happen um and so that is the plan for right now um i do feel um you know a little bit more at ease with my mom being there because like i said she is a nurse she is an RN, so she knows certain things to look out for um you know and if we have to transfer if stuff starts getting too crazy or out of the norm what to look but for yeah, that's basically my plan with this pregnancy with my birth i'm really looking forward to the birth i'm really looking forward to her delivery like i'm not scared at all i don't i don't have any i don't have any fears i know things can go wrong and i know from my case it is it is different you know i'm a v-back i've had two c-sections you know people always talk about the risk of uterine rupture but it doesn't really go up that much significantly for someone that's had two c-sections versus one um and honestly a c-section a repeat c-section a third c-section it would be for me is riskier than a successful v-back so there's so many things you know like once i start making videos again or whatever you know after the birth and the vlog and all of that stuff there's so many things that i just really want to share with you all especially once it's done you know especially uh concerning v-backs because there's just so much misinformation out there and it's just so much mm, fear tactics that are taught specifically not just birth because in the u.s at least uh, birthing is just a this thing that people feel like women need to be delivered from and, and it's like it's not intuitive at all um like it should be you know and it's not holistic at all you go into the hospital you're almost like 100 percent guaranteed to have a medical birth and women don't need that and our mortality rates are so high like i could go on and on and on about this topic and this subject and then when you throw v back in there it just gets crazier um so that's my plan i'm just gonna real quickly because this is running kind of long i'm gonna share my birth desires um and then i gotta go because i'm at target and i need to do a quick little bit of shopping before i go home get the kids some stuff well okay i'm gonna share my birth wishes right and then i'm gonna share some of my predictions so um my first thing is 
I want to give birth at home. I want my first thing is I want to have a vaginal birth. Like that's my biggest thing, and I'm hoping I can achieve that. And even though you know I'm praying really hard for it, and um, you know, reading and doing my research and all of that stuff, of course. You know, if I end up with a C-section or I end up having to be transferred to the hospital or whatever the case may be, honestly, as long as me and the baby are safe and I get to return home safely with my other children, then I'll be happy. And I think that's something that I really learned um, with Asa's birth because the thought of C-section didn't really cross my mind. Like, I've done it twice already, the vaginal birth after a C-section, so it wasn't even something that I thought about. But when I did end up needing one um then i was i wouldn't say defeated but i was like it was like a big shock or surprise to me um but through that experience though i feel like it gave me it's still i still have confidence in my body if that makes sense and i still every single time would choose to have a trial of labor at the cesarean a total lack versus just scheduling a repeat cesarean but i do understand now why some women just schedule it like i'm not like you know judging them or saying they shouldn't or anything like that that just for me personally is not something that i would ever do you know even if i had another c-section i still would try for the total lack yes my first thing is of course i want a vaginal birth that is what I'm hoping and praying and wishing for. And I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that God will just answer that prayer. Um, uh, next thing is I want it to be at home. Like I want all my sisters to be there, my mom to be there, my children to be there. And it just be like a really peaceful, relaxing experience with no like crazy stuff going on. Because like last time was, was crazy. Like the laboring up until the C-section. And a lot of stuff happened that with the knowledge that I have now, I would have never agreed to or would have never done or whatever but you know as as you grow and as you learn you know you can make different decisions so I just really am looking forward to that freedom at home that I know that that will give well, me of course you know I'm praying that she is head down so obviously I can do that because um, I don't think I'm as confident in attempting like a breech birth at home like that's just for me that's out of my league i wouldn't do something like that so if at the end you know she is breached or something like that then i would just do the c-section now if i had a midwife or someone that delivered breech babies and you know had a lot of experience and felt really confident in it you know and they were able to be there to support me then i would try it but with me and my mom no <laughs> i would not try that so I'm hoping that I can give birth vaginally. I'm hoping that I can do it at home. I'm hoping that the baby is head down. Um, I'm hoping that I don't tear. That's one of the things that I was kind of worried about because I did tear for both of my vaginal births. Um, so, you know, I did have to be sewed up and I was kind of worried about, well, you know, if I am free birthing at home, what would be the, you know, like what do you do after that? if you do tear how do you even know if you tore all this kind of stuff so the things that i've seen so far is some ladies say you know if you do tear you can always go into your ob and they can repair the tear there you know go to the hospital afterwards um and some other ladies are like well just let it heal on its own it obviously would take a little bit longer for it to heal to heal on its own and it probably depends on the degree of tearing so i um, I tore second degree with both of my vaginal births, but I'm really hoping this time that You know if I do try like being in a pool or being in water that would lessen the uh, Lessen the tear or maybe I won't tear at all That's what I'm really praying for is that I don't tear at all. So then I won't even have to worry about repair or whatever um, So yeah, so I'm praying that I don't tear um, and I kind of know so like with my vaginal births I so like for Kenzo, he came so fast and the fetal ejection reflex was just so great that I just pushed him out. Like it was just like, I pushed him out, my body pushed him out, he pushed himself out, it was so fast. So I, I understand completely why I tore in that birth. And then for Matthias, I was on my back so that can lead to tearing too because it's not like the best position to push in and my cervix had swollen right before I got to 10 centimeters so it was a lot going on I was in labor a long time and his head was a uh, quite large <laughs> so that's why I tore with him even though you know pushing wise it took me like an hour and a half to get him out but again it was my first you know vaginal delivery so 
um, it's, it's kind of common to tear in your first birth or, you know, your first delivery. So that's why I toured with him. So I'm hoping that this time around, you know, this being my third time giving birth vaginally. And if I'm able to like at least um, immerse in water for a little bit and let that area stretch out. Like when I start to feel that feeling of pushing, maybe if I can kind of control it a little bit better and not just, you know, bear down so much, but kind of let my body push the baby out on its own then maybe that will reduce tearing and uh, obviously pushing the other positions too. So hands and knees is supposed to be really good to prevent tearing, side lying. I, I got so many videos lined up, y'all. Like, it's unbelievable. But yeah, so those are the things I'm going to try to reduce tearing. Um, and But I'm really praying that I don't tear so I don't even have to worry about it. Uh, the next thing is I'm praying obviously that my blood pressure stays down and cooperates with me so with say I had preeclampsia I had to deliver pretty much immediately with Matthias it did start to go up and um, you know I had my magnesium for both of those births but for my last two I did not and my blood pressure stayed you know down I didn't need blood pressure medication afterwards and I was fine so I'm hoping and praying the same thing this time too that my blood pressure will stay down that I won't need like you know magnesium or anything like that obviously that's something that we're definitely going to keep a big eye on during labor so we do have to buy supplies that will you know help us facilitate a, a home birth and you know make sure that we're checking up on me and the baby so um so yeah i gotta get that but i'm praying that my blood pressure stays down and i'm also praying that i won't have any postpartum bleeding or hemorrhage because last time uh, for my last birth i think i bled out quite a bit and one of the biggest reasons why so it's a little bit on me is my iron was low and i really didn't do anything about it this time i'm really 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 trying to make sure that i'm eating um you know iron fortified foods of course you can have the pills or whatever um but my my iron has been good so far so far it's been good and it's been where it needs to be um, and so I do have my third trimester, you know, blood screening and all of that. And based off of that, we'll see where we are with my iron levels and stuff. And hopefully I'm not anemic and um, that won't be an issue. So those are my main things that I'm praying for is that, you know, no postpartum bleeding or hemorrhage. Um, blood pressure stays fine. Baby's head down. I can have a vaginal birth and I can do it all at home. Those are my biggest things. Oh, and the tearing. I hope I don't tear. But um, yeah, so you know, I'm just still continuing to do all of the research and all of the things to make myself feel prepared. But like I said, I really just feel like, you know, and it will be interesting to watch these videos back after the fact to see, you know, was I right? Was I wrong? That kind of thing. But I just really feel like this is what I'm supposed to do. Like this is what I'm meant to do. Um, I watch other ladies you know birth stories and testimonials and stuff and i'm just like if their faith in god is like that i believe in god like that not saying like because of them i do but i believe that he'll do the same thing for me so that's what i'm praying for and i'm really looking forward to it like y'all i'm so excited like i'm so excited i love birth so much like it's just such a I don't know it's such a fun experience and I don't have that fear that I feel like is taught to most women and I and I hate that it's taught that way or that people look at birth that way like it's nothing yes mortality rate is high it's higher than it should be in this country and there's a lot of reasons that affect that and if you're a woman of color it's just like it's ridiculous but honestly in the stuff that I've been researching and reading and and looking up for myself we stand we fare better at home supported by people that love us and that we love and that we feel safe with um and we have better outcomes for ourselves and for our babies so that's all i'm going to say about that uh like i said i'm praying 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 that everything goes to plan and even if it doesn't i will share you know the whole the whole everything what happened what you know if something happens and how to prepare against it if that certain thing happens to you or if you're in the same situation or whatever but i'm just really hoping that it'll come through and that i can help other moms like really feel supported with their birth options and know that there's other ways to give birth other than being in the hospital and and hooked up to all this stuff and your labor being augmented and this is going on and that is going on you know That's the last things um, that i wanted to say 
Oh, so my predictions for this baby. I think, and this could just be wishful thinking, but I have, I think she's gonna come at 38 weeks and five days. So that's what I'm thinking. And I'm thinking she's gonna be my biggest at eight pounds and six ounces. Now I could be totally off <laughs> because um, my longest pregnancy was 41 weeks, exactly. That was with Kenzo and I was miserable. And then my shortest one was uh, Saya. That was my first birth and she was born at 33 weeks. But it wasn't like I went into labor with her. It was an, an induced labor and failed induction, all that stuff. And she had to be a C-section. Um, and then Matthias came literally like right on time, like one day before his due date. And uh, who else? And Asa was an induction, um, but my water had started to leak on its own and I was like at 30, he came 30, 39 weeks and two days. So, so far everyone has been kind of all over the place. <laughs> So, I don't know. I'm just thinking that I'm going to deliver at 38 weeks and 5 days. So, we'll see. And Matthias, so far, was my biggest baby. And he was 6 pounds and 11 ounces. So, not really, really even big based on, like, standards of, I don't know, the general weight of babies. But he was my biggest. But I just feel like she's going to be the biggest. So, we'll see. We will see. Those are my predictions. And those are my birth wishes. I have not written a birth plan. I'm not going to write a birth plan this time. Um, my birth plan is basically in my head <laughs> and I'm just going to God with all the things that I'm looking for and wanting for this birth um, and yeah I think that's it I think that's it I have talked quite a bit <laughs> um, and that should be fun um, but honestly working you know as a chef has definitely made this pregnancy go by fast um, and like I said I got 10 weeks left so I'm really excited I know it's gonna go by even faster um, I plan to start working when I'm like 36 weeks so that will give me um the longest will give me like a month or so to you know relax and rest and the shortest will give me like two weeks or whatever so we'll see what happens when Thais's birthday is coming up um and then it's going to be my favorite time of the year so I'm just so excited to like one be having a little girl um two to be for it to be you know like fallish time and to be able to do it at home with my loved ones like i'm just really 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 looking forward to it so i'm just really hoping i can share with you all how that turns out and hopefully it goes in my favor but even if not as long as me and baby are safe that's really 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 the main thing you know so i think that's all for this video and i think this is the last time you'll see me before i give birth so if that's the case and i hope any other moms out there if you're pregnant currently um you know watching this video if you were pregnant at the same time as me because i know quite a few ladies are pregnant uh now too as well i hope you all have good pregnancies and i hope you all have you know safe deliveries and births wherever you decide to give birth to your baby and if you're a praying person just pray for my recovery since you'll see this video after uh the baby is born but thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in my next video bye